Listen, if I die on a scooter in Mexico, my wife's gonna kill me. As a kid growing up in Canada, there weren't many ways for me to connect with my Latino culture. There was family, there was church, and then there were the movies and television shows played on Tele Latino, most of which were written and produced in Mexico. The first thing I have memory of laughing at was watching El Chavo del Ocho with my family. The films of Mario Moreno's Cantinflas were family favorites. Later, as I dreamed of filmmaking, it was Mexicans who exposed me to new structures of narrative and visual storytelling. When I think of Mexico, it's being close to the art, culture, and music that I grew up with that excites me. Growing up for me, Mexico City has always been the place where culture has been centered. Pretty much what I grew up knowing about who I am as a Latino were originated from things that happened here in Mexico. The vibes are here, the food is here, and let's go out and find it. We set out in search of our first meal. This being Mexico City, we didn't have to go very far. So these are the fish and shrimp tacos. Start with some salsa there. Go. Really good. This guy? in there late. It was so good when he joins the party. That first meal in Mexico City was incredible, and it wouldn't be long before we found yet another hit of amazing flavor. It's a uh, mango yeah. with chili powder, uh, lime, and salt. Wow. Mm. How's that? So good. Ooh, it catches up with you. That, having that shot right there is where the magic happens. Babe, it's gonna mess you up. Noted and disregarded. Oh my God, that's so good. Whew. Our food walk of Mexico City continued into the night with a visit to Mercado Roma for ceviche, raw fish cured in lime juice that must be made and eaten fresh to avoid the risk of food poisoning. Though not traditionally a Mexican dish, nearly every Latin American country has created their own version. In this case, mango and pineapple are used to add sweetness and served on toasted kernels of corn for added crunch. If the night had ended there, I would have gone to sleep satisfied and with a smile on my face. But one does not simply walk by a scene like this and not eat. The technique of cooking meat on a vertical spit originated in Ottoman Turkey and was brought to Mexico by a wave of Lebanese immigration in the 19th century. Mexican shepherds adopted the technique from which we get the name tacos al pastor, or in the style of the shepherd. Our first full day in Mexico City kicked off with the usual search for a good cup of coffee and breakfast, neither of which would be hard to find here. So we decided to take a break from tacos just for this meal. Uh, so we got ourselves a pretty basic breakfast, at least for me, eggs, avocado, bacon, but instead of maple glazed bacon like you would get back in Canada or North America, you get agave. But the best part of all this is all the fixings you get. So we have, again, our like oil with like maybe ancho or chipotle peppers dried and mashed up in there, habanero, pickled onions, pickled jalapeno, all that combined to 
make what would otherwise be just like a basic white girl breakfast proper fire. After breakfast, we took an Uber into Plaza Garibaldi, the birthplace of mariachi music. Now, mariachi for me has been like, it's this like music that's super emo. Super grown men crying over a bottle of tequila, overly dramatic. Mariachi music is something that I heard in my house growing up all the time. It would just be like Saturday morning, you'd hear the music, the trumpets, the violins and everything, and you knew it was time to get up and clean the house. From Plaza Garibaldi, we headed towards the historic center via Mercado Lagunilla. This massive market is busy, loud, and best of all, not a single tourist to be found. The more I travel, the harder it seems to find these rare moments of complete immersion in a foreign culture. Walk slowly and take it all in, because the feeling wouldn't last. Plaza Constitución, or El Zócalo, as it is more commonly known, is the epicenter of tourism in Mexico City. At first, these Aztec rituals felt like nothing more than an effort to separate tourists from their pesos. But this square has been a significant site for the Aztec people since the pre-Columbian era. When the Spanish arrived, they destroyed the Aztec sites and built the modern square and the Metropolitan Cathedral with its ruins. The next day started with a breakfast at Husset, a beautiful courtyard in the trendy Roma neighborhood where Chef Michael Calderon is serving rustic Mexican country dishes. Given how Mexican food goes, a lot of spice, a lot of color on the plate, and uh, a lot of flavor. Like these huevos rancheros, topped with avocado slices, crema, and queso fresco. There's a few things that I cannot ignore when I see them on a menu. French toast is one of them. This version is topped with figs, mascarpone cheese, and drizzled with honey. That afternoon, we headed to Coyoacan. This borough was once the village from which Cortes based his conquest of the Aztecs. It became the capital of New Spain in the 16th century, and became a borough of Mexico City in 1928. On a hot Sunday afternoon near the busy historic center, where the smell of food and warm sugar fill the air, I found another cultural relic I believed long extinct. The Zeus. The Zoot Suit was made popular by the jazz scene in Harlem of the 1940s and later became the style of choice for young Mexican-American men in Los Angeles. They called themselves Pachucos. Nobel Prize winning poet Octavio Paz called the Pachuco style an embodiment of liberty, of disorder, of the forbidden. Long story short, Los Angeles papers were fueling racism against Mexican immigrants. American sailors led attacks on anyone wearing a zoot suit. They became known as the Zoot Suit Riots. Riots spread across Los Angeles where more young Mexican men are beaten, stripped down, and then arrested. And of course, the local media blames all the violence on the Mexican immigrants. Leading LA City Council to ban the Zoot Suit in 1943. Many generations and many more miles separate these pachucos from the events in Los Angeles. But in Coyoacan, on a Sunday afternoon, they were dancing to the Mambo Classics in the park, defiantly keeping the tradition alive.
of the things that I always read on travel guides or travel blog, blogs, whatever, are the tips on how to stay safe in a city like this one. It's usually things like don't get in a cab, don't eat the food off the street, and don't draw attention to yourself. You just have to go out there and experience something for yourself and not uh, be swayed and you know feel like you're going into harm's way by going to a place like this. This city's just been, it's just been lovely and it's quickly for me moving up the ranks of my favorite cities in the entire world. On our last day in Mexico City, we left the city altogether in search of the ancient ruins of Teotihuacan. At its peak, Teotihuacan was home to 125,000 people, making it the largest city in the Western Hemisphere and the sixth largest city in the world. This is the Pyramid of the Sun, which is the third largest pyramid in the world. A lot of people would think, oh, the Aztecs built it, but it actually predates the Aztecs. And we really don't know much or anything about the people who actually did. The culture that built this was around 400 years BC, and the Aztecs found it around 1400. Um, and it was already here, it was already vacant, so we really don't know uh, much about what was going on here. Nowadays it serves as the world's oldest Stairmaster. Tourists come from all over the world to climb the 248 steps of the Pyramid of the Sun. Oh man, it's not that bad, it really isn't that bad, but it's such a hot day that I need to stop at every landing, get a little bit of a water break, just because it's like, not only is it like steep, it's hot. So this dude just climbed up with his daughter on his backpack. Good job, dad of the year. Great. Welcome to Selfie Avenue. What was once a temple erected in service of the sun gods is now in service of the Instagram gods. Hashtag Temple of the Sun, hashtag Mexico, hashtag Aztec Ruins, hashtag Don't I Look Cute Today, hashtag Insta Travel, hashtag Wonderlust. You know, I often like get back from one of my trips and I'm like, I feel like I, I wish I should have done some of the more touristy things. Uh, but then when I do, every time I'm just like, why do I do this? Like, I hate crowds, I hate lining up. But yeah, like you got your guys out there selling noisemakers for some reason. Because everybody is always like, I need that thing that makes me sound like a Jaguar. Eventually, we surrendered to the heat of the sun god and headed back to the city where there were a few things I needed to do before we left Mexico and moved on to El Salvador. I, being the dummy that I am, forgot my on-camera microphone back in my apartment in Toronto, which is probably the reason, but it's most definitely the reason that my audio has been pretty crappy. Let's get that microphone. I gotta try these scooter things. They're all over town. Maybe I'll take them back because it looks like it's about to rain and I uh, do not want to get caught in that. Now that we've got good audio and uh, it's our last day in Mexico City, let's talk a little bit about this city. First of all, safety. Other than me being on this scooter, whoa, rock and trying not to die on the streets of Mexico City, it's pretty safe. We would walk around day, night. I mean, that obviously depends on the neighborhood that you're in, as with anywhere else in the world. We were staying in the Condesa neighborhood, which is close to Roma. It's a beautiful neighborhood. It's got this gorgeous park right in the middle of it. Whoa! If I die on a scooter in Mexico, my wife's gonna kill me. Everything has been pretty safe. At no point have I felt like, oh my God, this is dangerous. And I feel like a lot of Latin American cities get a bad rap. But here we are, Mexico City, on a Monday night, and everyone's just, everyone's just having a good time. 
the most dangerous thing in Mexico City has literally been this little ride about in the scooter. My left arm is absolutely dying right now. And then the grip on my right arm, you can see that there, is like crazy because I'm having to do all the steering and accelerating with the one arm. So God forbid I should have to brake suddenly. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do in that situation. Leaving for El Salvador tomorrow, so there's a lot more cool travel content. Um, I got a very exciting project that I'm working on. I'll tell you guys about that a little bit later. Anyway, before I die, I am going to turn the camera off and make my way back to the place where from I found this scooter. Thank you.